All right, let's start. That's going to be a very interesting session because I'm going to present how Quarkus make Java functional reality almost without internet. So we will see how far we can go. So let's present myself. My name is Clemens Kofi. I'm working at Red Hat, mostly on the Quarkus project. I'm doing a lot of things around Quarkus. And here, yes, today, today, well, in this talk, we are going to talk about Amazon Lambda and how you can implement uh, a function with Quarkus. So let's stop for slides because it's a quickie, so we need to go uh, inside the actions pretty quickly. So you go to code.quarkus.io, you look for Lambda, and you will find a couple of extensions because there is multiple way to do lambdas. You can use the regular REST stack of, of Quarkus using REST is directive and things like that. You can use the low level uh, lambda integration or, and that's what we are going to use, we are going to use Funky. Uh, Funky is an abstraction on top of uh, several serverless engines such as uh, Azure Function, Amazon Lambda, Knative Serverless and others. One thing important is that right now our tooling is for Lambda is still limited to 11. Uh, Amazon has released 17 last week. It works. So our tooling is still not there. So it's about, yeah. So today it's going to be uh, 11, which is uh, funny because I did Java 20 just before. So I'm trying to download, trying to download <laughs> um, the project. Yeah, no? Ooh. Okay, let's try this. Okay, it did it, at least I hope. So, there we go. I will uh, go here. Hello, Devox. I'm going to open my favorite IDE and new window. Yeah, and here we go, we got our project. So I selected Maven, you can also select Gradle, you can use a Quarkus CLI, but yeah, so you decide what you want. What's important here, again, it's Java 11 for that demo. Very quickly, probably for before Quarkus 3.1, we will be able to have a Lambda using 17. Um, so what's important here is that we have this funky uh, extension. So what uh, does Funky brings to you? Well, it makes writing function super simple. The only thing you need to do to write a function with Funky is add func. One annotation, you're done. It will automatically uh, uh, parse your payloads, what you receive uh, from JSON and inject that as well for the response here. It's a plain string and so on. So let's try this. So we'll go back to my terminal and I'm going to start my application in dev mode. Because doing a function doesn't mean that you have to immediately push it to Lambda, if we can. But you, you can try everything locally. And Quarkus knows that it's a Lambda function because we have the extension. So it will automatically start an emulation of the Lambda uh, uh, systems. So if I'm here and I do HTTP name, you will get immediately hello Devox. So let's try with Devox Greece. And we got... Hello, uh, hello, Devox Grace. So that works. Function like regular software need to be tested, right? We can't really trust our feelings that everything will be fine. So what you can do here, just type R and you have continuous testing running. What does that mean? That means that every time you change your function or the uh, tests, it will uh, automatically run the test. So right now it has generated one test which just checks that you get, uh, oops, sorry, this one, uh, that if you uh, enter bill, you get hello bill. That's great, but we are in Greece and we don't say hello and here I need my cheat sheet because I'm unable to write that, sorry. So Calimera, if I'm right. So let's do that. We go back to our function here and he say, hey, no, sorry, doesn't work anymore because it expects hello. So let's do what every software developer is going to do. Instead of fixing our function, let's fix the test. <laughs> Calimera bill. There we go, we're good. So great. So now the hard part. I'm trying, I'm going to try to get this uh, uh, deployed. So I will package it. I will skip the test because we already passed them. And now uh, I'm going, uh, so yes, and I want to show you this. So what do we have here? 
Automatically, Quarkus has understood that this is a function. So instead of a regular fast jar, it's a generated function.zip, which is what is expected by Lambda. Obviously, you would have used Microsoft uh, uh, Azure function. It would have been a different format. It also comes with a manage.sh. And if I would have used Windows, the Windows counterpart, which will do everything I need to do uh, for me. So typically, I come back here, and I can just say target manage.sh create. And it will try, depending on you and his phone, uh, to create that function, to upload it, and uh, let's see. So what I wanted to show you in this first part is how easy it is to start writing a function with Funky to test it, to run it locally before well, hitting a bandwidth issue with your phone. Um, yes, no? So while this is doing, let's have a look at two other functions that I've already deployed before. So I have my function here. Uh, no, still no, still no, okay. Um, so, oh, sorry, here. So I've already deployed two functions, hopefully I will be able to invoke them. Uh, so the first one, again, using Funky, uh, is a little bit more complicated because what we get as input is a JSON object containing an image. So you don't have to think about Base64 encoding, Quarkus taking care of, uh, take care, takes care of this. And it's return um, uh, a response which contains the image, but squared and smaller. So that's what it's doing. And one thing important is that it passes that in a dy uh, Dynamo table. So even with Funky, you can use injection in your function. You can use any other extension, because typically here, it's using the Amazon SDK extension to get the Dynamo client automatically created and authenticated for me. And then it does a weird Dynamo scene thing. So. Um, so that function here is not any type of Java function. You know Java has a call start that can be a problematic for function. Um, Quarkus helps a lot, but thanks to a new mechanism that uh, Amazon released in, back in fall or uh, winter, October, November, uh, we can go really, really fast even staying in Java. That mechanism is named SnapStart. SnapStart is a snapshot restore mechanism which, when we will deploy our function, when we will deploy a new, publish a new version of our function, will start running the function in a specific mode in six different zones and after a bit, take a snapshot of the memory. When we actually invoke the function, instead of restoring, the, restarting the function from nothing, it will restart from that snapshot, which make it very, very efficient and very, very uh, fast. In addition to that, you only pay for the actual invocation and not the snapshotting. So it has a very really aggressive pricing model, which is quite interesting here. So uh, you do snap start enable true, and we have a few optimization. Uh, so you can decide where, where you want to go with this. And that's it. So let's go back here. It's still, still uploading. Oh, that's going to be interesting. You may want to check the Wi-Fi again if you're connected to the right one. Uh, no, I'm not connected to use. Oh, that was yours, right? That's mine. Okay, so let's try this. We will see. Maybe we will have our function or not. So fortunately, I already uh, deployed that function. It's there. And what we can see here is that it's still using Java 11 for the same reason. But as you can see here, it has a specific handler, which is a funky handler. So it's that class which contains a world magic, which uh, bridge Amazon Lambda to funky. So and do we see the snap start yeah, configuration? Yeah, and we see that we have snap start enabled uh, here. Every time you publish a version, it will do the good thing. I've deployed another function that will consume this one, which will consume our Dynamo table and get the last uploaded pictures. And if we, if everything is fine, we'll display it on screen. So to do that, same thing, uh, I can inject and, and do uh, everything. However, this one is packaged into a native executable. So that's one of the capacity of Quarkus. You can take any Quarkus application and package it into a native executable, which means that it's much faster, less memory, but much faster to start and less memory, perfect for function. So the only things 
you need is this part of the POM file, which is generated by default, so you don't have to remember it, but it's that. And you just compile it to uh, with Maven clean package dash P native or dash D native, and you're good, you have your thing. So if we look at that function here, yeah, this one, yes, it's this one. So here it's a custom runtime. Automatically, Quarkus understands that you want de to deploy a native executable and will provide a custom runtime that the Amazon lingo to say it's almost a container, but not really, um, uh, uh, with your native executable on top of that. So handler stays the same handler. Oh, an interesting thing, ARM. Yes, this is an M1 computer, so I have most of the software not working anymore because they need to be compiled for ARM. Luckily here, I compile my native executor, executable to ARM and I can deploy to Amazon as ARM. It's actually a slightly cheaper and it's better for the energy consumption. So you can already do this. Um, so now, we still don't have our function. So, but yeah, well, we may not have it. So let's see what we can do with all two function. And that's where things are going to be very interesting. So this, HTML page is invoking the second function to get the last picture that has been taken. And it's a picture I took two days ago with my friend Ioannis um, of the Acropolis. So now I'm going to take my phone without, or oh, almost without internet. Let's see if I have a bit of internet. Okay, I'm going to take a picture of, take pictures of us. I'm really bad at selfie, so. Yet here, yep, use photo. It's going to upload it, so to call the first function, which will write to the second, uh, to the Dynamo T-ball, which will be consumed by the second function, and everything is fine, and the Wi-Fi is working, it should appear here in a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> mm? Well, we will keep it running, and uh, we go back to the slide, and we'll see if uh, it's working working after that. So what I wanted to explain is now with Quarkus and Quarkus 3, you go, you take funky. So first you can use Lambda, you can use uh, uh, functions, uh, Microsoft functions or, or Canative uh, eventless. You have built-in test facilities, deployment facilities, Java 11 and very, very soon Java 17. Um, and then you decide. If you are really targeting Java, uh, uh, Amazon, you can decide to say, oh, I want to stay on the JVM side. I want to use Snapstart. And then you just say Snapstart equals true. You can enable, disable the various optimization we do, and it will decrease the call start really drastically. And you will uh, uh, in really cheap. Or you can say, well, I want to deploy my function as native, and then automatically Quarkus is going to create a custom runtime, it has a good startup image, it uses less memory, and here you can already use Java 17, even Java 20, if you use a GraalVM version that supports Java 20. Uh, 20. So now, which one is the best? It really depends on your, on your function. Snapstart, you only pay for the actual invocation, but it uses more memory, and on Amazon, the memory you ask is how, well, the price per millisecond depends on the memory you ask. With native, you need less memory. So the milliseconds you are going to use are cheaper, but you may have to use a little bit more because in that case, you, you need to, uh, you pay for the beginning to the end. So yeah, you really need to see, it will really depend on your function. Try both, look at what is cheaper. And this is based on the current Amazon pricing. It may change at any time. Not working for Amazon, so I have no idea what they're doing. So, yeah, look at that. I took a selfie, it's in the right orientation, and you can ask these two guys, yesterday I did a few selfies like that, they were just all reversed and so on, which was funny, but yes. So, let's finish this. So, there is plenty of Quarkus talk today happening in this conference, and I recommend you, you see all of them, or most of them. Just after me, there is my friend Ioannis that will uh, explain why and when Right, to write a Quarkus extension. Then we have a Quarkus community both. You may not know what it is, it's just an informal meeting. There is a lot of people from the Quarkus team here. 
including uh, some manager and director of Red Hat that uh, supervise that uh, development. If you have any question, both technical or philosophical about Quarkus, join that session and uh, we can answer all your questions. If we can't, Georgios uh, will answer them. <laughs> <laughs> um, after that, we have two amazing talks, one about contract testing with Pact, new feature from Quarkus 3, highly recommended if you do test-driven development, if you do microservices, and the last one, we're in 2023, security is key. Yeah, you need, you need to see that talk where you will see how, how efficient and customizable is the security uh, uh, of, of Quarkus. That's all I have. You have the code there. Hopefully, you will have bandwidth and you will be able to, to, to have a little bit less latency when you take your pictures and see it. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you very much.